YouTube is at Narcos of Darkness, also known as Sir Killings in the Cups Book. And the following video is a rant that took place during my Docu Saturday series. I was watching a C.T. Fletcher story, and uh, for context, uh, his father abused him, and then they interviewed him, and they gave him a shot to uh, apologize to C.T., and the dad just was like... <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, uh, I had a heartfelt rant after it that I think people need to hear. It's a pretty decent story afterwards, and it's about, you know, apologizing. So, uh, check it out. Was he a good kid growing up? Was he a good, good kid? Oh, yeah. No, it was face, the face twitch. Very good. They just gave him an opening, and he didn't take it. He could have apologized right there. That's why I always respected my dad so much. My dad was very abusive when I was coming up. He was very abusive. When we got older, he went to prison, got out. We did um, therapy with him where he apologized for everything he did to us. He made excuses, you know, but what I'm thinking about CT's dad is, is almost the same thing. He probably, you know, his dad probably got worse than what, it's like what CT said about his daughter. He was a kid, he had a daughter. He was rough on his daughter. And he acknowledges that it was the wrong way. So this is just a progression. This is just breaking a cycle. Because most people who are abusive got abused by their parents. And it, so on and so forth. So it's a good chance that like T.T.'s dad was abused. And he probably did it better. Or he probably don't think nothing of it. It's like it was nothing, nothing compared to what I had to put up with. He probably doesn't see what he did was wrong. C.T. knows what he did is wrong. And not only that, the world evolves as we go on. And C.T. knows what he did to his daughter, his first daughter, he was really rough on it, admits that he was wrong. So it's just breaking the cycle, but like my father did the same thing. He told me, he was like, it's all I knew. The way I treated you guys was better than the way my mother treated me. All I knew how to do, what to do. And I always respected my dad for that. You gotta respect a human being who's able to, to step back and take a look at when they're wrong and they're able to admit when they're wrong and when they're able, able to apologize when they're wrong. That's like a, a lot of human beings for whatever reason don't have the ability to do that and it's and that's always been kind of weird to me. Um, I don't know. Uh, that's always been kind of weird to me. Um, I've done it. I've done people wrong. Uh, high school, I dropped out of high school and during that time some stuff happened. And when I realized that, like, what happened, where I, I got real, I got super homophobic um, because uh found out my ex-girlfriend was kind of using me as, like, a fucking beard. Not only that, her grandmother accused me of assaulting her. She didn't accuse me of assaulting her. Her grandmother accused me of assaulting her. But, but between me and her and between everybody who was around us, her grandmother was not even in the state, not even in the city. Everybody around us know that we were active physically and everybody around us know that she was the more uh, aggressive one in the situation because I I was virgin I didn't um I learned everything from her uh and there were more there's more to the story it's a lot deeper it, it's it's a tearjerker because like homegirl daddy was abusing her we were talking about what happened to us as kids I told her what happened to me and why I was a foster kid, what happened to my family, what happened to my sister. And she told me one day that her father, her stepfather is, is doing things to her. When I found that out, you know, I, um, my one of my foster moms, she had a lot of friends who were cops. She called a favor in one of her friends. One of her friends, he didn't have a warrant or anything. He couldn't, he didn't have evidence. Uh, the mom wasn't going to testify in in didn't know that I had told my um, uh, foster mother. So what my foster mom did was she called her friend, her friend went over there and started questioning. The stepdad uh, got spooked and disappeared. So yeah, he was doing what he was, what she was saying he was doing. Kids are not gonna lie about that. Like after I got accused, I got scared and left. Cause I'm a black man, nobody's gonna believe me. She's the smartest girl in the school, nobody's gonna believe me. I took out my anger on my girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend, and not her family, because it was actually her family that was doing it. Like, her mother didn't, her mother liked me. And it's funny, because my mom told me later that her mother was happy that she was dating me because she thought her daughter was gay. Uh, she told my foster mother that, and my foster mother told me this 15 years later. That's wild. So I yeah, it was very much a beard. Uh, her mother, her dating me made her mother happy. 
the way it was done is she didn't want her her mom and her sister in her business anymore about her liking girls. So anyway, she ended up dating me, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, her mom liked me, her older sister did not, and her grandmother didn't like me. And they're like, and she's like, they know she's gonna be the valedictorian at the school, and she's smart, she gets straight A's, while I'm, she's dating somebody who only get A's in like arts. Cause I was not a good student when it came to like maths and Englishes and shit. So, but yeah, I really like this story with CJ. Um, I'm, I'm really disappointed that he, I don't know if, uh, it looks like the movie is almost over, the documentary is almost over, but like CC's dad had a shot to right there apologize, but it, chances are he didn't, he couldn't apologize because he thought what he did wasn't that bad, more than likely. I, oh, the whole point of that story I was telling, when I got real super homophobic uh, when I found out, like she broke, she was, her, her family forced her to break up with me. A bunch of shit happened. I fucking ran away. I started cutting myself. I came back to the school after everything died down. They didn't have any fucking evidence. Uh, my mom went to the school and defended me. My mentor cursed out the vice principal and told the vice principal that my girlfriend was very aggressive. There's no way in hell. If anybody was forcing anybody, it was her forcing me. And she, she wasn't forcing me. I, I was very, uh, uh, a very willing participant of the whole situation. I was very willing. Um, it, it was very enjoyable. We were teenagers being teenagers and doing what teenagers do. That's that's all that was. Anyway, I went back to the school um, and found out that she was dating a girl. Um, and from that point on, I got super homophobic. I would call her out her name. And I did this and I did this and then, and then I uh, dropped out of high school from that point. I was like, I can't, I couldn't live with that shame. I couldn't, like, I couldn't live with that shame. I didn't, people were asking me questions and people were saying, oh, you know, she was doing this and this when you was gone. She was in the bathroom with this person and this person. I was like, I couldn't do it. I left the school. Again, I misdirected my anger at her. I did work on myself because I was very homophobic at one point. I called her out of her name a couple of times before I just disappeared off the radar and nobody ever seen me in that school again. I apologized. I hit her up one day on Facebook and I told her, I explained to her, I was like, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Um, everything that transpired, I apologize for everything that transpired after the whole situation and I apologize. I tried not to give an excuse, um, but I apologize because I knew I was wrong and I, I should have never done or said any of that stuff or should have never been that aggressive or called her out of her name and again she didn't accuse me it was her her sister and her grandmother's like plan to get rid of me my mother found that out later but it was their plan to get rid of me because the mom liked me and it worked she accused me of something that i didn't do and got me away from her it got me out of the school and their plan worked homegirl i think she ended up being number one and the city or something along those lines. I don't fucking know, but yeah. I later I was like, okay. I was I kept that kind of haunted me. That that situation haunted me because I really loved that girl. So yeah, I always loved her. She told me she said this thing to me like I, I was a foster kid. I didn't think I was gonna make it past a certain age. I didn't think I was gonna be anybody. I didn't think I was gonna accomplish anything. And the reason why I will always love this girl is simply because she said this one thing to me this one time. She was like. Um, I, I told her like I'm like I'm stupid like I don't got good grades like you I'm nothing like you I'm like I don't even understand why you like me she said to me she said you're a diamond in a rough <sighs> I'm gonna start crying yeah she said that to me she said that to me and that that's been like my power for a long time um that's been my motivation for a long time those that word those words like when you were you kind to somebody when you're younger you remember those moments you remember stuff like that and that Nobody ever said anything like like that nice to me before. That wasn't in my family. Um, at least that's where I felt about it. But she said, "You're a diamond in the rough. You, you'll get, you'll dig your way out, or something along those lines." I don't know what it was, but she called me a diamond in the rough. And you know, um, I didn't end up in prison like I thought I was gonna do. I while I did drop out of high school, I do got a college degree. I stuck that out. I went to Afghanistan. I, I did it was 12 years in in the military. Um, I. I got a pretty good job. I bought a house. I had a wife, um, a child. I got another one on the way. I got a girlfriend. There's, there's a lot of positive that happened since then. That it, you know. Anyway, the whole point of this situation, yeah, that it's never too late to apologize. It's never too late to apologize. It's never too late to be a human and to admit that you're wrong. 